Industries. Hello everybody, Torgal here and welcome back to Mob Smasher Industries. We have received a very nice email from uh, somebody at headquarters by the name of Whitby Dragon. And um, I was planning on setting up a new power source today and that email came just at the right time because it is actually... Uh, telling us to try out let's just oops wrong key right there let's just take a look at that email together and i'm not gonna read the whole thing to you but if you guys want to read the whole thing um just pause the video for a second but it's pretty much comes down to that um we are you know exploiting the canola oil of the region to make power um but there is apparently a patent on this by an owner of mr 20 you know, who is a little bit touchy on the matter. Um, and um, Whitby Dragon tells us, you know, that this outpost is so far away from headquarters. Um, we could process, uh, proceed further on the idea and hopefully make a much better and more efficient fuel that we can use um, to automate our power production here. I wanted to say thanks to Whitby Dragon for this awesome email and I am going to do my best of implementing this. It is actually the next day now. Yesterday I recorded on and off for an hour, hour and a half with you all. Of course you're not going to see that now because I decided to scrap that footage. Because I spent a lot of time running cables and, and turpin, honestly. Um, it is not a hard process on how this system works. But the problem is implementing it and then especially automating it. It's actually more complicated than I expected this to be. And the way the process works, let me run you through it first, is the canola and oil. Okay, I already tore down our canola setup up here and I moved this uh, drawer down to here. And I'm going to explain all the hookups and everything. But that is the only thing that is down here right now. So how it works is you can either... you can run your canola your oil generator the thing right here we had two of them um right here the oil generator so you can run them with three different fluids from what i know you can run the regular oil okay first of all you always get the canola oil and then we're gonna put this in the fermenter and that turns it into oil okay but then there is also crystallized oil and then there is empowered oil. Now this oil, when you run it in the generator, gives you 40 RF a tick for a total of 80,000 RF. If you run a bucket of this in the oil generator, it makes a 200 RF a tick, so quite a lot more, for a total of 400,000 RF a tick. And the last one here runs at 350 RF a tick for a total of 700,000 for one bucket. So while you spend a little bit of energy making the better oil, you get a lot more in return. So it's definitely worth it. And I don't think I would have ever played around with this if I did not get that email. So I'm excited about it. And the way it works is with the seeds. Okay. If you take a seed, a regular canola seed, and you put it into or in front of the reconstructor, it turns it into a crystallized canola seed. And you take that and dump it into a bucket of oil and that makes you a bucket of crystallized oil and you can take it another step and make another crystallized canola seed because it uses that when you dump it in the oil and put that into the empower right there and give it some energy and that turns it into an empowered canola seed and that one you dump into this and then that makes you an empowered oil so it's a multi-step process until you get that that I think I figured out um, how to do it, but unfortunately I was not able to figure it only out with Xnet. We, I am going to bring in RF Tools Control as well, but I'm gonna show you step by step on how to do it. So I installed an elevator here because I wanted to be able to cable everything down here. And down here there's just cables and all the connectors and so on, I'm gonna show you one by one. They are there and you're gonna see them connect. So the first thing I set up here is a farmer from Actually Additions which of course now doesn't have any more power. I did jump start it earlier, but now everything ran out. It says a thousand RF, but it does a nine by nine in front of it. So it's gonna harvest this field and keep replanting it. Now underneath, underneath this here is a connector, okay, from Xnet. 
right there oh man walking so slow right there okay and then there is a second connector i'm gonna show you real quick that is hidden underneath actually there's four all together the one on the farmer the one underneath the frame drawer and then this one here is also connected this is where we're gonna have our processor controller sorry it's called the controller from where is it right there from xnet that's gonna sit on top of that and the last one is this one here and i get into more details so remember this there is the graded hopper above here from hopper ducts and there's a chest underneath it i was not able to directly draw items out of this hopper duck out of this graded hopper with the connector you need to put it into a chest apparently first and then from there i can pull it out and everything is empty Okay, so that's everything underneath, and now we'll set up all the machines and the logic and everything together. And we're gonna start in, well, in the beginning right here, okay? First, we're gonna need our canola presses. Let me put this book away. Where are they? Um, they're not stacking because one of them each I took from upstairs, so they already had um, a little bit of in it. Oh, here they are. Man, that took me too long to find. Okay, so right here, we're gonna have four canola presses okay and like i said this last one has some stuff left over from upstairs but the other ones are all empty and then right here we're gonna have four fermenting barrels and there's something i learned guys you cannot extract from the fermenting barrels from the top you need to have them on the side the canola presses will auto push okay they're um, regular canola oil into the fermenting barrels so you don't need to have anything here. this one will go here this one will go here and so on so there is that setup then the next step is going to be that we're gonna need the reconstructor to make that extra that new seed right here the crystallized seed okay and we're gonna put that one right there so it's faming, facing into these uh, chisel and blitz glass panels that I put here and um, just so the item doesn't fall out and then once that is done, it will fire the laser, okay, and turn it into another one. Now, this graded hopper here, of course, will pick up anything that falls on it. But the way we can um, stop that is by giving it a filter. That's why I use this graded hopper here. And you put this seed on the bottom here. So now if I throw anything else into here, it does not pick it up because it's not that seed, okay? So that is the only way I could figure out how to make sure it doesn't pick up the seed before the laser gets fired all right now of course above this we're gonna need a precision dropper i'm trying to stay with um actually additions as much as i can but some things are going to be other mods whoops i gotta go shift right click so there's the precision dropper that's gonna drop the seat down now you guys see this is already set to pulse because i had everything set up but let me get this one out just in case we need it with a redstone torch you can change this from a redstone mode deactivation so if i would pull a lever it wouldn't shoot until i take the redstone signal off but everything we're going to use we're going to set up on pulse all right so now the seat gets picked up and of course now we need to send it into a bucket of regular oil and let me just get all of these out here yes that's all i need right now so we need a fluid placer right that places the fluid in front of it we're going to put that here so this is going to place the fluid right here and then above it we're going to need another precision dropper and it's a little bit funky there we go and that's going to drop this seat into it and then it will turn it into the this right here the crystallized oil and once that is done i need to pick that up again with a uh, fluid collector okay on on like you see all of these are set to pulse guys that's important for this setup that i'm making here so now we have that oil okay now that oil i'm gonna need to again send to here i don't want to leave it here because that way it's just a it's a more streamlined process okay so now that it's, it's picked up and i'm gonna send it over here and place it in this spot and then above that of course i'm gonna need to drop that seat that empowered seat right there which then turns it into the empowered oil i hope that i explained this well enough now which we're then gonna pick up and that we're actually gonna send to our generators the actual canola generators here or the oil generators. sorry these two so 
each one of them is going to make a 350 RF a tick. That's where I'm going to leave it for now. So it's probably, it's going to be 700 RF a tick for now, which is, you know, we only had 80 so far. And I'm just going to put them here for now. It doesn't matter. I, I just want to not forget about them. I actually didn't include that in the setup yet, but we'll get to it. But this seed right here, we still have to make, right? So that crystallized seed that we're getting from here, we need to send here. But we need to make another one that we are then going to send to an empower setup right here. So here's the empower. Come on. And then here is four of these display stands. And I left all the cabling uncovered for now. I do have, and I just wanted to show you real quick how that works. I do have a bunch of facades. Where did I put them? Oh, there they are. Facades right here. They're just like like that. It's we make 16 at a time. And if I remember right, we are right clicking this. Facade is now mimicking laboratory block. And now if I click on these cables here, it hides them. And it does not use an actual laboratory block. I don't have any in my inventory. It just mimics that so it looks that way, okay? And it's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, that way we won't be able to see anything down here. And whoops. Um, how do I get underneath you? I guess I have to break this block first. Then click here. And I've been pretty lucky with getting... Oh, speaking of the devil, right? But you go away. I don't care. Not picking you up. Oh, I need to pick it up. Dang it. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't close the hole there. All right. But I installed this elevator because I got tired of running around and running back up these stairs over there. So here we are. Now let's close this off. Okay. I covered everything up. So everything is nicely put away. And now we're going to need the main block of the XNet. And that is the controller right here. And I'm also going to use my simple power cell for right now, just so I can jumpstart everything when it's ready to go. Um, which, of course, it's going to be in the end later on. And we're going to put the controller right here. And again, underneath the controller is a, is a, a connector from XNet. Underneath this is a connector from XNet. And these four outside here have a connector underneath it and the farming station. And that is all. Yes. So those are all the connectors you can see. But it's not really important. And I'm going to put this here right now. This still is full on power. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I need to remove this channel here. Okay. So now nothing is training. Nothing is running. And we're going to set everything up together. Um, now, we're going to go with... I told you with RF2's control. Because I was not able to figure out. Here's the logic, okay? I'm going to have to supply this guy with a, a seat which comes from up here. It needs to drop, and then shortly after, I need to shoot the laser. Well, I don't want to shoot this laser if there's nothing in here. So there's going to be a logic I need to check. Do you have a seat? If yes, drop it. Do I need a seat? That's the other question as well, okay? So I'm going to have to have... Um, like underneath in this chest, one seat waiting in all time to send here, and then I need to make another one to send over there, right? Um, over here, it gets a little bit more complicated, okay? I need to send a bucket of oil to here. And I don't want to have this more than one bucket. That's just how the logic worked out. If it has a bucket, place it in front of you. Only if there's a bucket of oil here, drop a seed in it, okay? And only if the correct oil sits here, pick it up. There is no way for me to find out if the correct oil sits here. So I need to trust my logic, and I'm going to use tokens for that. You're going to see. And then we have the same over here. Only place the correct oil here, and only if you have at least a bucket, then drop the seed and then pick it up again, right? And I need to make sure to always have at least one of these seeds waiting here as well. So there's a lot of stuff we need to set up when it comes to the logic, but it's it was quite a lot of fun figuring this out. So the first thing we're going to do here is... Yes, we're going to set up between these two right here. I'm going to have three nodes right here. There's going to be one here, one there from RF2's control, and one up here. Oh, wow. You you turned the other way. I don't want that to be... Can I... Can I wrench you? Yes. Sweet. 
I want them to be facing forward, right? So this this node is going to talk to these two. This node is going to talk to these two. And this node is going to talk to these two. And then we're going to need another node above this guy. And I, I just decided to set it on top of it right there because it only talks to this. And there's going to be a node behind this, um, the, the atomic reconstructor, that I'm going to govern with that. I don't need to have anything over here. You guys just keep making me oil. And this over here we'll figure out in a second. This was the hardest part to figure out, this whole construction here, right? And now let's name them first. And, and this is important to know is that the left one is going to be east and the right one is always going to be west, okay? So it's east and west. East is the first um, set and then west is the other one. And we're going to call this one here. Uh, the channel I'm going to call... Oh boy, what am I going to call this channel? Um... Let's call it oil. Uh, no, let's call it... Let's call it Whitby. There we go. Thank you very much, Whitby, for that idea. And this node right here, we're going to call a break. All right? This is the break node. And then this over here is Whitby. Man, I hope I spelled your name right. This is place, this node. And this one right here, I'm going to call Whitby drop okay i that makes the most sense to me place drop break breaking i could also take a call a collect okay but it, it just makes it easier for me to really remember the names um and this one right here we're gonna call again on the channel whitby um this one we're gonna call oh this would also be a drop but let's just call that seat the very first one is seat and then this one back here, we're going to call, I think the easiest, would be laser. All right. Okay. That was one more note I needed to set up. And that one I put directly down here next to that chest. And I called that would be chest. Okay. Because I'm going to need to check if there is a seat in here. And you guys see, I just tested it. It, it works. Um, well, I tested it a few times. And let me just close this up again. And now again, um, I, th I don't know if I've said it yet or not, but I want to mention it that anytime <clears throat> we need to talk to any of these nodes, okay, any of them, and we need to talk to that side, that is east, away from the programmer here is west, to our left from the programmer is going to be north and to the right is south, okay. So this is north, east, south, west. Away from us is west. The rest is easy to remember, I think. Okay. I need two machines right here. So I set up the processor right on top of it. And above that, the programmer. Only the processor needs power because that's actually going to run the programs that we have, right? And right here is the programmer. And this is the first program we're going to work on together now. Um, I, I'm going to test every program first and then write it with you guys again. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that and put in my card right here, which is already called name laser. Well, how you do that is you click on save the first time. And afterwards, um, if I just click on save, it doesn't happen anymore, right? If I load now, nothing is in here because I just cleared it. But if you click shift save, you could rename it in case you ever want to name the, uh, change the name of it. But I'm going to call this one laser. So what's going to happen? What I want to check is if in that chest underneath... There is one of these seats, right? Uh, I'm going to need this one here again. One of these seats. If yes, don't do anything. If no, drop a seat down into here, right? Then shortly after, shoot the laser. And then I have one and the whole process should stop. Well, what we're going to need to do first is actually put seats into this uh, precision dropper. And we're going to do that via this uh, connector right here and this connector is called reconstruct dropper you can name these okay so for the ones that have multiples for example these um fluid collectors you know i named them oh actually did i i did not name this why did i not name these i thought i did let's see here real quick okay so we have the crystallized oil dropper oh my god let me sleep real quick um so we don't have any more noise um, okay, so let's talk talk about this. So this one I named. Interesting. Crystallized oil. So I just forgot these here. Crystallized oil. Just so I know which one I'm actually talking about. And these right here I called canola oil. Correct. Canola oil. 
because that's the block that sits in front of them when I am ready to drop the seed in. That is the oil dropper. Okay, I'm going to call this the same. So they're all the same name. Canola oil. And... Oh, man. These are full blocks, guys. These are not tile entities. So I cannot walk around them and it always gets me... So this is crystallized oil. I don't need the dropper part because I can see that. And let me just check. Canola oil, crystallized, crystallized, and crystallized. And you are also called canola oil. Canola oil. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, and this one here I did call reconstruct dropper. Okay. So I think I named them all now. So what we're going to do first is use the XNet controller right here. You've never used that and you have eight channels right there. I'm going to keep the first one for last because that's going to be my power distribution. Okay. That's actually, I'm going to keep the first two. I should have enough with just these back here. So because one is going to be coming from our oil generators to the battery. And then the second one is going to be coming from the battery supplying these, for example, display stands and other things with power. So I'm going to start with the third one right here. It doesn't matter which order you do it. And this is going to be an XNet item, create. The first thing I'm going to do up here is always uncheck enable processing. So until I'm done setting it up, it doesn't already try doing things. Because unlike the RF2's control, where you have to write a program first and then put it into the processor, this happens right away if it is enabled. Okay. So what are we going to do? From the frame draw right here, we're going to create and we're going to set this to extract. Okay. That's it. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to a stack. But I only want to extract. I don't know. Let me just get one here. I only want to extract canola seeds. Now there's something and I felt really dumb um, because I asked um, McJetty, who is the mod author from these amazing mods, why my program or my, my excellent controller didn't work. But when you look at the ID here, um, right there you see 4196 this one is also 4196 the regular seed for some reason actually additions has 4260 but just to make sure that we always have to correct one you guys see behind it there's a colon with a number that's what's called the metadata okay so whenever i use anything with these seeds from now on i need to make sure that i say meta mating meta data matching Okay, so it only takes this type. It will only take 4260. That is it. Okay, and I'm going to insert that into our dropper. Now, let's see it. This is crystallized oil, canola oil. I need the... Uh, what is happening? Where is my... Why, why do I not see you? Your reconstruct dropper, you are clearly connected. Am I just blind? This is the fluid placers. Oh, down here. There they are. Reconstruct dropper. This guy right here. I need to insert. Okay. And I'm only, I'm just to make sure, I'm also going to set this to that seat, metadata on. And I want to keep a maximum of 64. I don't want to keep more than that in that dropper. Okay. So now, as soon as I enable that, check it out. It has two right now. If I enable this channel, we should see quite quickly, bam, there's 64. It will keep 64 seats in there. When we use this one, it will automatically put the next one, right? Okay, so now we have it up there, and that is all we're going to need to do with XNet here. Later on, of course, we're going to have to supply this guy with power, which is down to 36,000 RF, so that's going to be... Um, a little bit tricky. So it's supplied. Now we have to write the program. Every program starts with a with an event. Okay. I always use the repeat. And we're going to set that to 20 ticks. Meaning I'm going to check every second. Okay. I'm going to check every second. Um, and that is all we need there. So now we need to check underneath um, in that chest. Do you have anything? All right. So this one is called chest. That's what I called it. And again, the side is away from me, so that is west. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to check. I don't care what slot, but I am checking for a crystallized canola seed. 
That is all you need to set up here. You don't need to worry about or dictionary or routable or anything like that. And the slot, like I said, anywhere in the chest. I don't care where. And now we're going to have to compare that, right? Now, there is no lesser than comparison, okay? So what I'm going to compare is, is it bigger than zero? And I'm going to compare the last integer to zero. Are you bigger than zero? This one right here counts the items in the chest and it will turn an integer. Okay, if there's one in it, it will return one. If there's none in it, it will return zero. And I'm checking if it is bigger than zero. Okay, so that means when it's not bigger than zero, it is... Okay, I'm sorry. If it is bigger than zero, true, don't do anything because we already have one waiting. But if it's not, so it's false, then we're going to continue with our thing over here. And the way we can do that is double click here. It's green. Okay, it's set to true. It always switches the position. So I need to set this one here first to false. And then I can set the true to right there. Now, what I want you to do is um, if, if it is true, that means there is at least one seed okay i don't want this to run right away again so i'm gonna put a wait time and this is has to do with that if you don't tell the thing to wait it will continuously check every second okay but i could already have one dropping right um and shooting and it will already drop the next one and also i noticed that in my testing the laser, when it comes out of here, counts as a full block. So the next seat that drops will land on top of the laser and most likely fall out. It's kind of weird how that works. It's actually pretty much filling that block with the laser. Okay, hope that makes sense. All right, but anyway, so I'm just going to tell the thing to wait 60 ticks. That's three seconds in my test that worked out nicely. And then I'm going to tell it to stop the program. This whole thing here is one program, okay? Anything saved on one of these cards is one program. Just stop. I don't want you to do anything anymore, all right? And why did you switch over here again? Oh, I put this in the wrong spot. Sorry, right there. Right there is the, if it's true, so I have one, wait three seconds and stop the program. If, I, if it's not bigger than zero... Wait, hold on a second. If it is bigger than zero, true. If it's not bigger than zero, that means it is zero. Yes, that's why it's false. Wow. <laughs> now we're going to have to send two redstone signals to that thing up there. So it actually drops because it's set to pulse. You guys remember that, right? So this one is called, what did I call you? Seed, right? Whitby Seed, yes. Um, right there, we're going to say Seed in the note name. And the, oops, I went past it. The side is down because it's underneath it. And then I'm going to set set the redstone signal of 15. That's full strength. And then right after that, so in the very next action, I'm going to say again, seed, side down. I'm going to set it back to zero. That is the only way I could figure out how to send a pulse with RF2's control. I don't think there is anything over here where you can actually send a pulse. Uh, where's the green section right there? I can wait, I can set redstone, I can send a signal, but that is to another program on the processor and so on. So I just, you know, 15 and then zero and that works. Now, after this, I'm going to wait three seconds again. Right now, what happens is when we did this, it dropped the seed. And I want to make sure that seed has time to fall all the way down, okay? And then I'm going to set two more redstone signals. So right here, I'm going to wait for three seconds. And then I'm going to say on the laser, which is the side is north. Okay, to the left is nor uh, north, east, southwest. Yes, it's the north side to our left. I want to set 15. Again, I'm just giving it a redstone pulse. And then I'm going to say again on laser... North, yes. I don't know why I always keep getting confused with that. I'm going to set zero, okay? And then again, one more thing. I'm going to wait again until the program is over to give the hopper underneath time to actually pick up the item and put it into the chest. Another three-second wait time, okay? So, do you have a seed? No. Drop one. Wait three seconds. 
fire this laser, wait three seconds for this to pick up, and then the program is over and it will check the chest again because it checks every second, okay? I hope that makes sense. So this is our program and I'm pretty sure it should work. All right, so let's save this. And now we come to the processor right here. Now, this program right here, we're gonna need a processor and we're also gonna need a network card. I wasn't able to talk to the further ones even though the regular network card is supposed to be checking in the area 17 by 17. Well, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, way past these notes, but I didn't find them uh, until I made an advanced network card, okay? So it's in here, and that is all we need for this right now. And the first thing we need to do is net set up with B. You guys will see there are six nodes found. One underneath here, two, three, four, five, six. So it finds all our nodes, they're all there. And then, am I forgetting something? I don't think so. All we're gonna do is put the program card in here. You guys see, it dropped the seed. It lasered the fire, shot the laser, and now it should stop because there is one seed down in the chest. It's not doing anything anymore. See that, guys? That was very easy. I'm trying to wrap my head around this, which step I want to do next, but I figured we're going to finish with the crystallized seed first. The crystallized seed, one needs to go up in here, and one needs to come and wait over here in this empower. So why don't we continue with that? And we come in here, go to channel three, and uncheck it first, okay? We're extracting from the drawer and we are inserting into this dropper. But now the next step is that we need to extract from this chest. Okay, create, extract. But I only want to extract crystallized ore, make sure, or crystallized seeds, sorry. Make sure you check the metadata checking here. And now we're going to insert one into the empowerer, okay? That can always wait and can always sit there. Um, and like I said, only one of these, and we're gonna set one, make sure meta is checked. And then we want one more in the dropper for the canola oil, because we're dropping it into the canola oil. Insert one crystallized oil, check meta. Okay, so now what should happen if I enable the channel is, one should go up here, it should, should drop another one because then the chest is empty that one should go over there and then it should drop another one so there's one sitting in the chest so end result is once it's in the chest one here and one of the empower let's see if that works out so channel three enable all right that one went over there already fired the laser it's gone and we should see one more dropping Fire the laser and it's gone. So now I should have one up in here and I'm very sure there's one in the chest. Otherwise this would go again already. So that's perfect. So we got this figured out. Now what's the next thing we're gonna do? The next thing I'd say is we're gonna, now we, we need to go to the oil. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is give these canola presses back here um, oil. I'm not gonna, mm, that's, that's a bummer. I don't have another, yes, I do have another connector, guys. So I think for the time being, until we are done, I'm going to break this one and it should be set to output. So we can start supplying everything here with power for our testing and then we'll come back afterwards and change the power out in the very end, okay? So this one is extracting, yes, okay. So I guess we can set up our second channel now, which is energy, create, and first of all, uncheck it. So we're going to extract from our simple power cell, however much power you want to give me. And we're going to put that into the four canola presses right here. They're all by default on insert, and that's all we're going to need to do. And let's turn this on. And all of them are filling. You guys see Xnet transfers the power very quickly. Um, how much do I have left here? Oh, yeah, that sucked up a lot. I have a solar panel sitting up there for the time being, just so I get a little bit of power back. Ooh, I got the hiccups. Sorry about that. All right, so we got that. And now the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to name this channel right here. We're going to use four items again, sorry. 
Actually, do we need another items channel for that? No. Let's go ahead and remove that again. We can keep that in the channel... 3. Right here. Yes. Uh... I guess I can extract from here. Right now, I only allow the seeds to be extracted. But if I am specific on my inserts here and whitelist only that. So we got this one, we got that one, and we got that one. So that should not allow any of the canola seeds to come in. So let's turn this off for a second. Let's go back to the extract, remove this, and uncheck meta. And we want to insert that into these four here. And if I'm not mistaken, it should be all empty because you cannot put seeds in here. Yes, or well, you can, but they're not doing anything. Okay, but we're going to just make sure that it only gets the proper stuff. So we're going to have, this is, uh, uh, yes. So we're going to insert here and here we can make sure that we are only allowing this. And let's turn meta on. Probably going to have to take out a few of the... Um, the seeds because I'm pretty sure it puts some in there, but it doesn't process them. So it doesn't matter. Oh No, I have to channel uncheck perfect So nothing is in these correct good. So now if I go to channel 3 and say do your thing We should see these filling here with the canola seeds. They're full of power Sorry canola itself not seeds and these guys here still all Have the proper stuff this guy doesn't have anything and these guys don't have anything. Very good. Okay, so now this is making us canola. So all these should start fermenting. Yes, they don't need power. So good. So now I want to make sure that I need I need to get this right here, right? And now we're going to set up our first fluid channel. Okay, so now here we go with the fluid. Create and uncheck it first. Now we're going to extract out of these four... This one here, and I don't care what rate or what, because it can only extract the actual canola, the, I think it's just called oil. Yes. And we're going to insert that into, into our first fluid placer, fluid collector, fluid placer. And this one puts the oil down. So I'm going to set here, insert. But I want to have a max of 1,000. And that is important for our program later, guys. I don't want to have more than 1,000 in this um, fluid placer, in this one right there. Okay, because if I... It has to do with the program logic. You'll see, um, it, it's going to make sense when you guys see it in a, in a minute when we set up the program. So now when I turn this on, I should see exactly one bucket in here and it will not put more. So that is what I wanted. Perfect. Okay. And we have the seed waiting here so we can start with our next program. And we're going to do that right now. Actually, sorry, guys. We're going to have a little intermission here. Um, I'm going to cut the second part of this into another video. Um, I'm recording this actually after the fact. So everything is set up already. And um, I did not expect this to take that long. We still have a program to write and uh, finish the rest of the setup. So I hope that you will tune in for the next part. I'm going to upload them both at the same time. So you do not need to wait if you want to watch it uh, back to back. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay safe. And bye-bye.